Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, it's time for Fuel Friday. This week I'm up in the office. Louise has actually let me come up here. It's a bit cold and wet outside. I've done most of my jobs in the workshop for this week. So I've been allowed to come up and do a bit of work on the computer. This week I've been recording a few bits of content for you to look at. And I thought that it would be a good idea to do a video on how we make our exhaust bodies. So that's from getting the raw materials in, to checking the sizes, rolling, welding them, cleaning them, and putting them on the shelf ready for building into our exhausts. Just in case you didn't know, didn't know, all our exhausts are built to order. As soon as somebody places an order with us, we haven't got the stock ready. We have a selection of different link pipes and accessories that are already pre-made that we're constantly making all the time. But the actual, the actual exhaust themselves, because there's so many variations, sizes, shapes, dimensions, lengths, etc. It's too many to have in stock. So we build everything to a special order. And that is how we've always done it. We've built everything to order. So you, the customer, can get exactly what they want. Anyway, let's crack on with Fuel Friday and hit the VT. <laughs> Here I have a load of pre-cut blanks, uh, already cleaned, prepped. Uh, we strip each side down because this is where we're gonna roll them and weld them. They've all been checked for size. The company that we use to cut these are very, very good on size. They, cut them within a 0.26 tolerance so we know that all our sizes that when they're rolled up they'll perfectly fit our caps so that we don't get any blowing from the from the joints and they're a good press fit when I put them together so I take my material in a couple of millimeters preform edge Same again, pre-foam that edge, roll it round, let's make sure that it doesn't overlap when it goes in, pull it out, adjust, should have a nice gap there ready for, ready for welding. Okay, that's the first lot, uh, these are the 400s that we've just done now, we're going to do the 350s next. Have a drink of my brew. Thirsty work this rolling. This material is 0.8 thick. Another thing to make sure that the material is absolutely perfectly clean. There's nothing, no marks or anything. There was a bit of just dust on there then. I also make sure my rule. My rollers are clean every time. And you do a you can do a check on the inside of the tube. After you've rolled, so check on the inside of the tube is just a look at the centre and shine it, shine it in the light and you can basically see if there's any dents on the outside of the tube which there isn't. You just make sure that without, as long as your rollers are clean, as long as the material's clean and obviously you're in a clean environment, you should have no problems with marks coming through because the last thing in, in the last thing that we want to happen is obviously when we've made all our sleeves, we've tapped them, we've welded them, they've gone on the shelf. When an order comes in, which we make everything to order, so when, when a customer place, uh, places their order, 
we build the exhaust. The last thing that, that comes off is the protective film. We put, peel that off and the last thing we want to see is peppered marks from carelessness during the fabrication stage. This is why everything has to be a certain way. This is why I do everything a certain way so that when we get to the final end of the product, it's perfect and that we don't have to rebuild anything or this is why we don't get many seconds here. Very, very few seconds because we're trying to make everything perfectly as we go along to save any mistakes. What I'm going to do as well, I'm going to adjust the rollers just slightly now because because this is a little bit shorter, uh, it, over, it tends to over roll the tube slightly. So we'll just adjust that and try that with our next one. here, larger gap at the bottom, smaller gap at the top, you can just adjust that with hand, but what I'm going to do is adjust my rollers, now that should disappear, perfect gap should be nice so now we can get through all of the rest of these or today's load Okay, so we're back at the welder. We've got all these tubes to tack up now. The reason why I tack them is because stainless is notorious for when I put it on the seam welder and my clamps come down and hold it together. When you start the arc, it can blow it away very, very easily. And it's very, very difficult for it to not happen. And obviously, once that happens, it blows the tube away and then the tube scrapped. So what I do every time that I'm going to do this, I put a small tack either end of the tube. It also helps me line, lining up on the seam welder afterwards so that I can put it straight up to a stop, put it in the centre, set the seam welder going and it will put a nice seam down there, down the middle of the exhaust for me. So all we're going to do now is line it up. Small tack. Small tack. Now, when you've done as many of these as I have, you kind of get used to where the tack's going to be. Oh, 
obviously I'm not looking directly at the arc what I'm actually doing here before I arc up I'm actually getting the ceramic to cover the arc so that I'm not getting flashed not not even any of my skins getting flashed here it's just putting the tap straight in the place that I want it but it saves me doing this all day and getting neck ache because today we're only doing 50 of these but when you've got hundreds of them to do you soon get neck ache Okay, so we're going to do the same here with the 400 long. What I didn't say before was basically this bar acts as a chill bar. So as I'm putting heat into it, it's dragging the heat back out. So it allows me to tack thin material without making it warp too much. Obviously this material is 0.8 millimeters thick. So if I was to try and weld this all the way along, or just tack it without a chill bar it basically in being stainless steel it pulls all over the place it ripples uh, and it makes a real mess anyway i'll show you in when we actually get through to that process but in the meantime i'm going to tack all these and then we'll get on to the welding process <laughs> 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 